So next up, I, I, I don't know if I have to, hello? Oh. I don't know if I have to introduce the next speaker. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, you know, whoever doesn't know Clara, please introduce yourself to her. Uh, she's, a, she's been a terrific advocate for our community. She's done incredible work for uh, the multimedia community. Um, I think there's, there's not much I can add because everything else I would start saying would take another um, half an hour or whatever. We'd lose too much time. So um, as soon as her slides come up, uh, I can actually read it from, her, from here until it comes, <laughs> it's coming up. So uh, Clara's going to uh, tell us about her work on prioritized evolu ev ev evolutionary optimization in open session management for 3D teleimmersion. I'm pretty uh, sure that's going to be a very interesting topic. So, with no further ado. Okay. All right, good afternoon. Thank you for staying until more than through to the end of the MMCs. Um, uh, I'm going to switch gears uh, uh, from uh, Dash and uh, on demand and uh, streaming to a little bit of a um, uh, different topic. Uh, we are going to look at different application domain, and that is interactive, more the mindset of uh, distributed multimedia interactive uh, environments. Um, and uh, we are going to switch from data plane to a control plane. So uh, definitely, you know, a different sort of uh, uh, topic. Um, but I think this is as important in the multimedia space as the uh, other type of on-demand streaming and data plane. So this is currently what I have in mind. Uh, we are at the University of Illinois with various of my collaborators in Berkeley, in Dallas, uh, studying actually uh, uh, interactive active uh, multimodal multi camera type of uh, environments and uh, here currently uh, we have gaming, we have uh, 3D Live, but one thing is that the same platform we are exploring is uh, collaborative dancing, the gaming, and so on. So uh, this um, 3D teleimmersive spaces, basically you can take multiple uh, 3D cameras, currently sort of the Kinects, and you can render them together and people can sort of meet and really uh, uh, play and, and um, train and uh, uh, do choreographies um, in the same uh, virtual space. So what I want to talk about uh, in this uh, particular space is about some of the characteristics that um, I think are very uh, uh, demanding, dem uh, introduce different dimensions for a multimedia space. Uh, and then particularly I want to talk about act activity-centric session management, sort of the control plane uh, and uh, sort of propose some of the discussions we are having on open session management. I know that ITF currently in a lot of uh, standard uh, discussions are going on in uh, session management and I want to bring sort of some of the new perspectives that we are seeing need of uh, new session management approaches uh, for this kind of uh, 3D teleimmersive environments. And then I will talk about sort of as the core of the presentation on again new view I want to sort of uh, push forward uh, looking at quality of service allocation in these spaces and uh, topology construction. So we will talk about activity-centric QoS uh, and then the uh, problem of multi prioritized multi-object optimization um, and um, uh, I will then dive into the uh, solution of the prior evolution of algorithms to do the topology construction and then um, evaluation. So um, the system that we are looking at uh, in this space is uh, the uh, teleimmersive space. You can imagine sort of multiple rooms uh, distributed to connected with the internet. And these rooms usually will have many, many sensors. They will have multiple cameras. They will have audio. They might have um, lightsaber type of sort of sensors. My undergraduate students really love it, building all kinds of sensors. And um, uh, basically, um, you currently connect them through a gateway, through the G, and then um, between these gateways, you are exchanging multiple streams of different rates, uh, different qualities uh, between them, and you render them all together so that people can actually really conduct activities. This is currently one of the activities we are currently actually engaged uh, in um, telehealth, um, tele um, uh, physiotherapy. So. Um, 
Uh, one of the important issues is that you have real-time interactivity uh, and you have these real-time immersive uh, participants. The second important characteristic is that basically as you have these rooms with many, many streams coming from the same room, you have multi-stream and also multi-view environment because one of the things we are looking at is multiple cameras. Um, and so you do have um, basically uh, in the best case cameras all around the user. And there is a particularly uh, important sort of concept of a view that uh, the viewer that currently is getting the, all the video streams, for example, from uh, sees is basically from one particular view. And one important issue I want to comment is that view doesn't equal to the same uh, uh, to, to the camera. View can actually consist of multiple uh, camera. Uh, so, for example, uh, in this particular case, is uh, view can be contributed by the camera C4 and C3. So please just keep it in mind. So the next uh, characteristics of these teleimmersive um, interactive environments is that they are very activity dependent. Um, we have been now basically going. Some of uh, people, some of the people here in audience know, we started with the collaborative dance, and it was really a lot of fun uh, to have these multi-camera audio uh, type of sort of um, environments. And uh, then basically we also tested video conferencing. And basically we have done gaming, and now sort of the telephysiotherapy. Happy. And uh, so, uh, and you have the same platform, uh, but uh, for every different activity, uh, people, users have different expectations in terms of the multi stream skew, in terms of end to end delay, and quality of streams and the bitrate. So, I want you to really think about it. So, the goal currently for us is to um, design or think about actually activity-centric sort of session management control based on the interactive sort of real-time participants really looking at the whole problem in multi-stream, multi-view, and then 3D active to match the expectations of users. So um, uh, I want to present sort of some of our thoughts on uh, the uh, open sort of immersive session, this OSM system. Uh, we are dealing with this uh, interactive environment uh, where basically the gateways are connecting, these are the middle boxes, application level, and they are connecting these various sensors, these multiple cameras, and, um, or, and the other sensors, uh, microphones. And one of the important issues is that you have to deal with uh, in the session management, you have to set up some kind of paths uh, of, these, uh, of these streams that are currently going to be streamed from camera one, for example, uh, from site X, it wants to go to site Y, and then from the camera, uh, uh, another camera, basically site X goes to basically on a site C. Um, so um, you do um, need uh, some kind of uh, session management to create these overlay routes. And we currently uh, sort of advocate uh, maybe in the similar uh, space as OpenFlow currently is going to really decouple the control and data plane and have a session controller that uh, basically um, uh, works with the gateways to uh, monitor the data plane and then assist uh, this particular environment to configure the data plane um, and uh, provide actually then uh, the session routing tables in each of these gateways for stream forwarding. So uh, the session controller currently, so it's a centralized approach at this point. We don't anticipate in these interactive spaces that we will have basically more than 10 sites participating in a real time sort of really collaboration. It's very different things when you just do viewing like a television, but this is truly just uh, think about it, people basically really working together. Um, and uh, so currently the centralized approach will uh, consist uh, of a um, couple of components. One is the resource monitor uh, component that basically receives the information about the resources from these individual sites, um, as well as uh, where these sites contribute uh, uh, through the users, um, uh, what kind of requests they have on the session. 
And then um, uh, through the st uh, streams meta management uh, and uh, policy and constraint management, the QoS allocation and topology construction happens, and then this um, session routing table basically get downloaded to these gateways. So um, in this talk, I'm going to um, talk about first about some of the metadata that currently we are um, uh, talking about that contribute actually to the overall quality of service and topology construction. And then actually we will talk about uh, some of the QoS policy and constraint management issues that again uh, contribute uh, to the QoS, and then I will concentrate on the uh, algorithms, um, on the evolutionary algorithm, the topology. So, um, because the topology construction component as he's then downloading these uh, uh, routing tables. So, so um, uh, what kind of metadata currently we are looking at in this multi-stream, uh, multi-site type of environment? One important uh, metadata is very much related to the various streams and views. So, as I mentioned, we are dealing with this uh, camera arrays, microphone, it basically can apply to many sensors, and there is a particular view. A user uh, sees, if you sort of think about it from the uh, site that currently generates content and uh, the receiving site that receives the content, the viewer particularly specifies user view and requires basically, I want to currently have this view, and so these particular cameras around that view from the sender point of view will contribute contribute to the stream. So view is an important metadata to capture, and then the streams that basically create that particular stream will be important. And um, uh, as you saw, this particular, we have, we have many cameras, so in some way we need to prioritize which particular streams are important to the views and which are less important. So another metadata that uh, the session manager needs to understand is uh, the stream differentiate based on the priority. And um, currently, we use so-called sort of contribution factor. This is from computer vision um, area, uh, where basically we are currently looking at the dot product between the camera uh, direction and the uh, viewer's direction that you are wishing, and that's basically this dot product uh, function actually um, uh, is um, very much dependent on the angle between the view and the camera direction. The smaller the, the, the angle, the more aligned the viewer and the cameras are, and the more important that particular camera becomes for the view. So um, in some way, then that particular uh, parameter becomes sort of the local priority. And of course, the higher, uh, the, the closer your camera direction is to the view, the higher the priority of that particular camera. And of course, some of the cameras like C6 or C5 will be very far away from the, uh, from the viewer design. So therefore, they will have much lower priority. So if I currently order all of the cameras with respect to uh, the viewer's desire and expectation, uh, you can see that the camera C8 and C1 truly are the most important uh, high priority streams where then C3 and C3 will be lower one. And of course the rest might be, I mean, I don't really need a stream that takes my behind if it's not needed. Uh, but I want maybe my front uh, face when I'm sort of talking or I'm dancing and so on. So another really important issue in the, so it's not only views and the streams on local site, but also because this is a interactive multi-stream type of uh, area, you have these uh, different sites. And um, so you have a, a viewer that currently sees basically maybe uh, streams from multiple sites. And so we need to do also this kind of prioritization and stream selection, which streams are going to be important from these multiple sites. And there again, uh, the viewer, the sort of resulting viewer says, I want to see this view of dancer on the site A and B. And so you can basically see that the cameras need to be uh, distributed to the uh, render C8, C1 on the site A, and uh, C338 basically from site B, and maybe sort of the next uh, sort of cameras in the vicinity of the view design. And so then actually your view 
on the rendering um, receiving side will be that you basically want to see uh, from the side B, C3, C8 from the side A, that's it, they are all getting rendered together and so on. So um, uh, there is going to go, uh, in some way we feel session management needs to do some sort of stream selection as you currently have this multi-stream uh, environment. And um, of course, uh, then you need to, again, put some kind of priority on all of these streams. So um, uh, when you have sort of multiple streams coming together and getting rendered, so um, again, uh, as you currently have uh, uh, sort of two streams uh, uh, and sort of from site A, um, uh, sort of the view, and then from site B, the, the, those two views, th those cameras get all rendered together. And so the joined view basically will be this one. And this is a much better view uh, than um, uh, for example, when you sort of do C3, C8, C4 from the site B and then sort of the next one sort of rendered together. So um, uh, we currently want to also give sort of priority because that's a good metadata uh, for us. So we basically start to prioritize the, from the site A, the stream C8, C3 becomes the highest priority because it truly aligns from the, to the viewer, what I want to see, then the priority seven will be C1, C8, uh, C3, and so on. Um, and so you can then basically really calculate so-called global priority as you are streaming among multiple sites. So multi-stream uh, priority, stream priority, pair view, all really important metadata um, for us to uh, then think about uh, topology and session route generation. Another important concept that um, I want to um, uh, sort of talk about is actually um, quality of service. But now actually, instead of thinking about quality of service per stream, I want you to think about quality of service of an activity. So for example, if I currently do um, a uh, video conversation, right, or, or sort of general conversation. The delay that I have to you is as important for, uh, for, for me in conversation as the delay from you to me and among all of the participants, okay? So often when we currently start to optimize resources, the quality of, so we have to consider what is the quality uh, for uh, the whole session, not just for me as, as, as I currently am sending. So, um, uh, so that currently um, is one important issue. Um, and um, so different activities also require different minimum quality of service. So for example, for video conversation, the audio quality among the all the participants and therefore the rates should be larger or equal to 120 kilobits per second. On the other hand, if I do a gaming, right, for particularly the lightsaber, video is much more important that I see currently where the sword is than actually audio, okay? Um, another important aspect is that when you do activities, um, uh, different quality of service metrics become important. So um, uh, in the video conversation, audio is really the number one. Then if you start to have multiple cameras, right, again, what is the most important thing? So we currently put uh, the bitrate for the upper body of the video because you do want to take the face. Uh, is much more important, end-to-end delays, -end but it's much more important than, for example, number of video streams. I, if I currently get a uh, video stream of the face, of the upper body, maybe some of the side videos can be dropped. Uh, and of course, the uh, bitrate of lower body. On the other hand, um, if I currently am doing gaming, particularly where I do want to see the opponents, how the, the opponent moves, I do want to see the upper body video, lower body video, end-to-end -end delay, and then audio might be much less important. So what we start to see with respect to quality of service policies is that we need to start to think about ranking them because it's the same platform, right? So um, in that sense, we do need to rank this particular uh, quality of service per activity. And then, actually, as I said, we need to look at the quality of service for the whole activity from all sites. 
So, um, so I'm now going to talk about the, uh, some of the sort of topology construction uh, and allocation. So in some way, um, you are currently having multiple streams. They are prioritized um, according to the user expectation. You do have then your activity specification um, uh, and uh, therefore you specify what uh, the current quality of service will be uh, of in, in the rank of, of importance. So given the multi-stream priorities and activity, uh, you are aiming to maximize the quality of service um, uh, set uh, f uh, based on the priority defined by the activity. And of course, you do want to, again, uh, make sure that uh, everybody in the conversation, in the cooperative activity, has minimum quality of service uh, uh, delay or a rate, uh, bandwidth bound. Of course, your uh, gateways basically only can take in and out so much bandwidth and then the delay. Um, so, and as we know, this is an NP hard problem. It basically uh, boils down to a uh, prioritized multi objective uh, optimization problem. This particular problem, usually, uh, this whole multi objective. Um, um, a problem is usually, um, or one of the solutions can be these genetic algorithms or evolutionary algorithms. So, um, uh, not sure how many people are familiar with genetic algorithms. I just want to very briefly sort of comment uh, some of the steps because those steps currently our session manager, particularly the topology construction, is going to follow. So usually you um, uh, basically start with some kind of uh, uh, sort of um, encode sort of some kind of solution and you generate some kind of uh, sort of gen initial solution and then um, you can may have um, 10, 20 different options, right? How your solution could look like. You pick the N best algorithms. Uh, usually these particular solutions are called in genetic chromosomes. And um, then uh, you basically start to cross over them, uh, among them, and you basically try to sort of create stronger and stronger configurations among them. Uh, usually the crossover happens that you find a common um, place where currently you could basically uh, sort of turn the, this chromosome and basically sort of switch. Um, or currently the genetic algorithms will um, also provide you functions like mutation, where you find basically one uh, place where you currently basically might want to replace with a stronger, so from zero, it, for example, goes to one. So um, uh, this is a very, very sort of simple um, uh, sort of um, genetic algorithm explanation. Now basically I want to show how we mapped these genetic algorithms to our uh, configurations of uh, topologies for uh, these uh, real-time participants. So the problem currently we are dealing with, um, there are going to be these steps, encoding, initialization, selection, crossover, mutation. The goal currently is that as each site has multiple streams, right, you currently want to disseminate them, right, there are these graphs, um, you have multiple choices currently um, how stream S1A, uh, S2A, right, can be routed from A to B to C, the same way for the stream from the site B or from the site C. So you currently create your chromosomes, right? You basically create your configuration. So for example, GS for, for the stream S1A, you can create basically uh, the stream S1A can grow from A to B and B to C. Or um, uh, the stream S2 can go from also A to B to B to C, uh, and so on. So you basically get these graphs, and there are, of course, um, so this is currently sort of your one chromosome, one sort of configuration for these streams that you can currently create. And, um, but you can have other options. That's what basically all of these solutions spaces basically are allowing you. So um, to start with a good initial solution, we actually currently are um, looking for these configurations, right, these topology graphs for each stream participating in a tele-immersion that um, it's, 
uh, each of these graphs satisfies minimum quality of service for uh, the particular activity, and it basically needs to uh, only have been subject to bandwidth and delay bound. And we currently have a previous approach, ViewCast, that currently gives us uh, a good set of uh, solutions. So um, here is, for example, one solution uh, going S1, the stream S1A goes from A to B and then to D. Um, so you currently have uh, a certain graph that um, satisfies um, the minimum quality of service uh, for um, minimum bound. So remember, it's not maximization of all QoS. This is basically just for individual stream. Uh, minimum quality has to be satisfied, bandwidth and delay. Um, there could be another graph, right? You basically currently uh, could go from, uh, for S1A, you can go from A to B, and then uh, from, um, uh, for example, for the S2A, you could go to A to D. Um, so you can have a different graph. Um, and they all basically would satisfy your minimum quality of service in terms of delay and bandwidth. Or this is another particle graph, right, uh, that uh, is there. And so you get these different chromosomes, right, sort of in the genetic algorithms language, uh, different graphs uh, that uh, you have options. So and then the goal basically is for the multi-objective uh, approach is to select and to somehow iteratively converge to the best configuration for every stream so that everybody has a great experience in the tele immersion. So how do we select things? So you basically have, if you look at the uh, row one, row two, row three, those are the different configurations of all of the streams that currently you consider important for the views in the activity. So we currently, in order to uh, differentiate how good all of these configurations are, remember, all of these configurations satisfy minimum quality of service in terms of bandwidth and delay. So we currently actually introduce uh, a sort of a concept, uh, sort of rank. And so this particular rank basically uh, will um, uh, have um, a set of quality of service parameters for that particular activity. And um, um, we currently, keep in mind that uh, we currently, for example, X1 is a um, quality of service like the rate of an audio, and it's an average ro rate for all audio streams. So if it's go from A to B, from B to A, from B to C, and so on. So it's a um, rank. And uh, now, basically, um, uh, also another really important issue is that different activity has a different importance of the quality of service. So here, for example, for conversation, uh, audio is more important than upper body video, and it's more important than uh, maybe number of video streams, uh, and so on. So. Um, uh, we currently can actually use the rank uh, and certain priority among the quality of service per activity to order them. Basically say this particular chromosome, this particular rank is more uh, important and is better than the other one if uh, currently, for example, most important quality of service is better than the other. So, um, and we also use sort of the other sort of metrics, but basically you can define these, these ranks, you can use the ranks to actually um, select which particular configurations are better ones than others. And um, uh, then again, you can also do crossover, right? You currently have this particular chromosome, right? It's the uh, configuration of uh, all of the graphs for each stream, right? That currently are participating in your tele immersion. And uh, this is another configuration, right? And we find sort of one common configuration, and at that point, basically, we switch. So uh, you actually get a new um, uh, sort of configuration of the stream routes uh, that is better. Right? That's basically the important issue that when you use crossover and so on, you get sort of a stronger chromosome, you get new solution, and there the anticipation is that the quality of service parameter that you care about in the activity is so, um, so with this genetic algorithm, uh, we basically iterate to uh, 
uh, come to a very strong set of routes for every stream um, uh, in this tele immersion based on the quality of service importance that this activity cares about. And then the session controller, once it sort of converges to the, se to the best uh, configuration, will create these session route tables for every site from a, uh, site A to B, B and C. And it basically downloads these session routes uh, and um, uh, so then basically the traffic can go. So I just want to show you a few um, um, uh, sort of uh, results. Um, so um, uh, we have uh, done uh, uh, experiments. Um, here is currently an example actually of the uh, sort of genetic algorithms or evolutionary algorithms where we start, for example, in the video conversation for audio rate 198 for some of the rate for upper body videos with high priority, upper body videos with low priority and so on. Um, and you can see actually in the conversation the upper body video is much more important. So as we iterate the, co the configurations the, of the routes get better and better for the audio and upper body video and for end-to-end -end delay, right? The end-to-end -end delay is we go from 224 millisecond to 127 mi to 95 milliseconds uh, where other quality of service parameters for the activity, like for example, uh, lower body videos, they start to disappear, right? And we basically start to drop them. And so after a certain number of iterations, you get sort of to the right uh, configuration uh, uh, of the quality of service. For, and as I mentioned, for other activity, um, uh, you basically will have uh, different uh, parameters because the quality of service uh, ranking and importance is, is different. So we um, uh, basically we have a tele immersion in our lab, but of course we don't have um, as many sites. We have currently two to three sites. Uh, so we actually wanted to run some experiments. So we did Planet Lab simulation. We recorded sort of the videos, um, four streams per uh, f for each site, ten sites, and we're sort of really curious. Um, uh, currently, how does it scale up to, for example, these tele-immersive sites when we are starting to create these uh, routes for up to 10 uh, nodes uh, uh, and communicating in real time? Um, and as you can see, the in-band and out-band bandwidth does very much decrease as you start to add more, uh, more nodes. Uh, so um, here are some sort of interesting results we were curious about. Um, one is uh, basically uh, how does uh, our algorithms, which is the OSM uh, versus ViewCast, ViewCast is the algorithms that only takes uh, find configurations of all of the routes which satisfy minimum quality of service uh, for particular uh, QoS like the audio, um, and uh, then basically our, and random, you pick basically random configuration for all the streams. So um, in the first one, uh, this is currently for conversation. We basically, uh, uh, with the OSM, when you start to sort of really much more carefully iterate, uh, you get a better final configuration of all the stre audio streams, video streams, and so on. Um, uh, when w instead of basically, for example, doing the uh, sort of other um, uh, sort of OSM when you do for the lightsaber, right? The, o the lightsaber doesn't need audio. Um, and uh, particularly if you look at the um, other okay, view casts, we are actually improving the, uh, the, the quality of the most important quality of service, the audio, um, by 50% uh, if we start to pay attention to uh, sort of the evolutionary um, and the importance um, of uh, QoS uh, for the activity. Um, very similar to actually when you look at the, the video rate, again for uh, the lightsaber, the uh, video quality is much more important than uh, for the conversation. And so you can again see the algorithms, the evolution can, does differentiate between the, uh, and between the quality of service per activity. Overhead, of course, there is a major issue. How long does it take on the session management? And um, here currently it takes, uh, depending on how many iterations, around two seconds. Uh, um, so I conclude um, that um, 
uh, I wanted to present to you the sort of different space of uh, session management, managing in particular coming up with uh, uh, sort of overlay routing uh, solutions that currently are uh, much more aware of activity as well as of uh, quality of service as a whole <laughs> for the activity as well as ranking and prioritizing quality of service. Um, and one of the approaches is how to find maybe the best configurations for all the streams, quality of service aspects is uh, uh, the evolutionary algorithms. And um, so um, we do see, I think, reasonable initial sort of uh, latency, uh, but we do uh, currently improve in quality um, uh, and user expectation because it's much more activity driven. Okay, I thank you. Conclude. Thank you very much. I think we have maybe time for one quick question. We're chewing up a little bit too much time. Yes, so yeah. <laughs> Is there any question? Yeah. So, so Clara, I wonder if, um, if, you, if your framework uh, currently accommodates uh, the di dynamics in these sessions. So a session might be allocated something now, but in the future might have different demands and it might affect other sessions and it might affect your current reservation if you're thinking about overheads of reallocating right. something that's already there. Right. So currently, um, uh, the um, uh, dynamics that we are currently looking at is view change, right? Because you currently have actually the, the camera priorities can change. But in terms of the activities, we are currently only looking at one activity at the time. So uh, the, the, the truly um, uh, reconfiguration, right? So if you currently run between the sites dancing, uh, we are not anticipating uh, uh, that there would be in parallel doing lightsaber. That's, um, that's a sort of a good suggestion that to look at basically uh, parallelism in, in virtual machine environment, for example, yeah. Okay, thank you. I think there's, there's probably many more questions to this very interesting talk. Um, I would recommend that you catch Clara later on in the week. We're going to have after the next talk. Oh, they're even shutting off me right now. So, <laughs> um, um, But we're going to move on to the next talk.